Hello, welcome to China Masterclass webinar. My name is Sela Mayan Yip. Uh, I'm the founder and MD of 11K. Today, we are very honored to have our special guest, uh, Yu Chen Sa, to join us today, who will be sharing his insights on how to empower Chinese investors to catch global opportunities and investment trends. Thank you for joining us, Yu Chen. Thank you very much, Sally, for the introduction, and I'm very happy to be here and share, share the discussion with you. Thank you. May I briefly introduce Yu Chen? So Yu Chen is the founder and MD of New Horizon Global Advisory, which is a boutique wealth manager and investment advisor based here in London since 2017. It is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority. Yu Chen himself is a distinguished business leader and also a very professional investment manager with a very great track record in the financial industry. He has also dealt with a lot of Chinese and international high level of individuals and institutional clients. And before founding New Horizon, uh, Yichen served as the multi assets portfolio manager at BlackRock and also in uh, Money Farm, which is a leading European digital wealth management company. So Yichen, uh, in first means, I know Yu Chen is a very professional and humble person. And today I'm very honored to ask you lots of questions. So we know that there are a lot of Chinese investors coming to invest in the UK and globally. And we really want to understand better about uh, their investment uh, lease. Um, so from your on the ground experience, Yu Chen, how do you summarize the Chinese investors' investment habits? And what are the major differences from those British or European investors? Thank you, Sally. I think that, that is a great question. I think, uh, in general, um, investment habit can be greatly depending on social, cultural, economics, and in individual factors. So it is important that generalizing, to note about generalizing the investment habit based on geographical or ethical, ethnic line can lead to, you know, oversimplification or, or even stereotypes. But, you know, we can discuss some broad trends or patterns uh, observed historically. And, uh, and these are the general trend and doesn't necessarily represent the habits of every investor in these regions. Yeah. Um, so in terms of the Asian base or, or Chinese investor particularly, has historically shown a strong preference for tangible assets such as real estate and, and gold. Mm -hmm. It is likely to due to um, cultural factors as these type of assets are traditionally viewed as a symbol for wealth and stability. And I would say, secondly, uh, you know, we want to highlight in terms of uh, importance of relationships in making investment decisions. The business in China uh, and many parts of Asia, frankly speaking, is often very heavily relationship driven. So yes. this extends to investment as well. So many investors prefer to invest in businesses where they have a personal connection with or based on a strong referral from a friends and family. And, uh, and the third sort of attributes from Chinese invest investor habits perspective is Asian investor or Chinese investor often characterized as being very risk averse or more risk averse compared to their European counterparts. And that means they, they may prefer safer, low yielding investment to over uh, to higher risk and high yielding investment, but there can be exceptions on that as well. And then if you, if you look at the European based investor, I think their typical uh, habit would be having a, a diversified portfolio. Um, so European investors, include those in the UK, often you know have assets such as stocks and bonds and real estates and other investments in their holistic portfolio. They often use mutual funds and ETF a lot more than Asian-based investors. And uh, and the second attribute is that they focused quite a lot on sustainability and the responsible investing, and that's becoming a, a very strong trend in the recent. Uh, years and so the whole ESG concept uh, has uh, you know the European investor are a pioneer in this area and it's a growing trend especially among the younger investors and finally I would say um, you know the European investors are uh, are very focused on regulation transparency so um, and they operate in a highly regulated market with a high degree of transparency and this can influence their expectation and, and habits uh, when it comes to investing so um, so these are I would say the key difference between uh, a European investor versus Chinese investor in general. Great. So in summary, they are more uh, relationship-based, uh, focusing more on gold and property, but also more open-minded, yeah. sort of tangible assets. Great. Yeah. yeah. Can you give some examples of how you successfully help your clients, Chinese clients, 
uh, along the assessment management journey? How, how do you help them? I think that's again a, a good uh, you know, topic to, to discuss in details. I think from my own personal experience, the, the fundamental base of any business relationship is trust. So yep. um, I would say um, at an early stage, if you, you know, when we were engaging with, with all of our clients, we first trying to build that trust and that trust coming from uh, a, a well-versed communication and uh, a deep understanding about the client's objectives and circumstances. We want to make sure whatever we do for the clients is suitable and it fits their purpose uh, rather than you know anything else. So that the interest has to be aligned, and, um, the service has to be tailored, and you know really serving the clients in terms of where they are their needs. So once the trust is there and you build, you can you have the basis to build a longer, more sustainable relationship, and it's about the quality and you know expertise you can provide to the clients. So the quality coming from again a, a level of commitment that we we can show consistently through good times and challenging times and yes. the responsiveness that you can provide clients to give them the assurance that you have what it takes to solve any issues because in the world of investing there are issues new issues every day and you know it, it can be something that's never anyone had experienced such as you know COVID we all have different difficulties yeah. managing that and once you have those sustainable relationships I think the client will naturally think of you as a trusted partner so they will come to you with more questions and more um, propositions and, and naturally uh, a, a relationship can be can be deepened and can evolve into uh, a multi-layer partnership and so you know an actual example we've you know uh, we took on a client a few years ago we initially just helped the clients with building a, a portfolio of assets in the UK in a secondary market so stock and funds and ETFs and we'll be managing that for the clients and and then that relationship deepened and we've you know, started to engage the clients on, on various different levels and starting to help the client's businesses, helping the business to further its footprints in the UK and across the whole of Europe. So that's, you know, bringing more revenues and more success to us. But ultimately, we're hoping that we also provide the clients with a trusted partner that where they can go to to solve difficult situations. So that's how, you know, you know we like to do business. Amazing. Yeah. Now I understand why you're so successful. So starting with building very strong level of trust and really delivering the work every time. What are the key investment trends in the next decade? It's a very long time. Let's say in the next two or three years, do you yeah. spot any key investment trends that are emerging in your world? The decade can be can be very fast as well. If I okay. think about 20, 20, <laughs> yes. it was like yesterday. Yes. I think what is three years or five years or 10 years, we're, we're essentially talking about mid to longer term trend. Mm. Then kind of uh, become even more evident uh, throughout the whole COVID period. The world is changing at a faster pace than most people are realizing yes. or, or, we, or, or we wish to. But what it, what, what it means for investing is it's all about observing what's happening now, you know, predicting the trends and that's, you know, that's going to be happening in, in the coming years and, and, and position ourselves strategically to capture those upward trends and all the boy down, downward trends. So um, to get into specifics, I think there are, there are four trends which, which look helpful over the next five to 10 years, so medium to short to, to long to long periods. Um, one is climate change. So mm -hmm. that's something that's been happening, you know, over the course of last uh, last few decades. So I think that is going to be even have even more emphasis going forward. So you know, technologies such as solar, solar power, alternative energy, electrical or hydrogen vehicles, and battery technology, and those are the very kind of exciting new areas where investors are very interested in. And the second area would be AI and big data, mm -hmm. and AI has, can kind of gain dominance and and, and capture all the headlines from the start of this year with chat gpt4 you know as a more general trend there are so many infrastructural or, or, or fundamental technology or, or investment themes out there which we can look into such as you know cyber security chip semiconductor making cloud computing and and data center and these are all essential infrastructure to empower the the growth of ai and big data as a new way of new of living and, and, and conducting businesses. And the third area would be um, deglobalization. So as you know, we have increasingly more geopolitical tension around the world. So what that means in terms of how countries work together 
going forward is you probably will see more defense military spending, armed production going forward, and more supply chain management. So countries become less dependent on each other. I intentionally, so those companies focus on those areas would tend to do well in the next mm. decade, in my, in my opinion. Finally, will be demographic changes, huge demographic change in many countries. China, in particular, we're seeing you know decreasing you know newborns and and the aging population is also like a main factor on how you know the government manages the economy. So that has a big impact on how people spend their money. Yeah. Uh, so consumer products and, for example, service for early education, healthcare, fitness, domestic service that can be. Uh, a very interesting area to look at. As more young people has more access to new technology, the way they entertain themselves, gaming, AR, and and VR technology are something that people are, are, are excited about. The whole metaverse concept came out, you know, a few years ago, and people are looking into that. And many big companies look into that. And and finally, on how people spend their money again, it's going to be a, a dominating theme going forwards. And you know, last but not least, digital currencies, like it or not, is here to stay and is probably going to be uh, experiencing another interesting few years going forward. Great. Yes, I love all your uh, very clear investment trends in the next decade. So uh, what would be a huge investment opportunity for Chinese investors, particularly if they are going to uh, look for investment opportunities overseas. I think that's a, again a, a, a very interesting angle to look at this because we wanted to narrow down the scope to possibly the UK market. So we're talking yeah. in the context of UK or European market. Yes. Um, I think from my own experience, there are uh, in, in kind of the short to medium term. So if you talk about the next three years, there are so many interesting opportunities in the technology startup space. As UK is one of the best places in the world that has a very um, a well-structured educational, um, you know, a structure. There are so many good universities out there, so many talented graduates and laboratories and uh, and resources to 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 incubate um, great technology startups. So uh, the rapid rise of technology startups, especially in areas like AI, blockchain, big data, you know, fintech, those areas I talked about um, previously, and has a very interesting short-term investment opportunities. Um, uh, and China in particular has been in investing heavily in those fields in the past. So I, I think that can be a very relevant opportunity to look at. And um, another thing which um, Asian investor or Chinese investor would like to look at are healthcare and biotech. Mm. And uh, um, so the ongoing global pandemic has highlighted the importance of healthcare and biotech and company developing, for example, vaccines, diagnostic tools and the telemedicine technology are, are great potential short term opportunity as well. And to a slightly longer time horizon, I think, you know, the, the likes of green technology, renewable energy, and that's, again, something the UK offers a lots of, you know, great um, companies and uh, China and other Asian countries continue to you know, battle pollution and work towards the carbon neutral goals. Green technology and this area um, offer a very substantial investment uh, opportunity to, 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 to investors in, in Asia, particularly in China. And that, you know, includes you know, electric vehicles, solar power, wind power, particularly in the UK, and other renewable energy technologies. I think these are the kind of short to, to medium term objective and uh, and, and finally, I would like to say to, over the longer period, I mean, there are just so many great assets the UK has and, uh, and, and historically speaking, the pound is actually at a very attractive level to invest versus, you know, um, yuan or any other currencies uh, around the globe. So um, I think many Asian countries are, are investing into uh, UK assets because it's operating in a, in a very structured legal, legal society and um, law abating society. So it's uh, it's a very mature economy, has a lot of great resources to, to make the long-term opportunity, uh, opportunity more, more attractive. Um, so I think these are the kind of the short, medium and long-term opportunity uh, I want to highlight. Excellent. So a lot of positive, exciting opportunities uh, for yeah. Chinese investors in the UK. That, that's really good yeah. to know. And finally, uh, what is your top advice for Chinese investors on building up good investment habits? Okay, um, I think that's something obviously, you know, everyone needs to develop their own habit of investing because it's, uh, it's, it's really something mostly driven or a result of their personal experience. But I would say as a general sort of uh, 
points and comments. I would like to to, to say that um, I think number one is about diversification. Mm-hmm. And because uh, I find from time to time, most of the successful Chinese investors or entrepreneurs, they, they're very heavy into, in, into the area of their own expertise. And but there are just so many other great opportunities out there where they may not be aware of, they or may not have the time to, to, to capture them. It's a great exercise to um, to divert their attention to other areas and to think strategically how to capture all of that. So building a diversified portfolio is very important, a much better risk reward um, than, than having a, just a couple of single name stocks in your, in your portfolio. And it helps with you know, risk management as well. And second point is, um, you know, always do your own research before you make an investment. It could be even in the areas of expertise, but this particular setup or this particular company may may have you know certain issues which you're not aware of. So it only can be discovered where thorough due diligence are, are being conducted. So do your own research, I guess, is the second key takeaway on becoming a good investor. And and thirdly is manage your emotion and take profit mm-hmm. when, when there is a good opportunity to yes. do so. Um, I mean, I've seen especially over the past three years when you know, during the kind of the loose or combinative uh, monetary policy era, and um, you know, many stocks has just gone up to an unsustainable level, and people are, are very happy, obviously, to see their portfolio doing so well. But they, they they somehow have the illusion, or we all did have the illusion that this is going to go on forever, but it never, you know, go yeah. on forever. It will stop at some point. So it's important to take your take your profit and uh, to book your book your gains and and look look for the, the you know the next opportunity, and to to you know really to manage your your your, your portfolio. So effective portfolio management, I guess, is the right phrase to summarize the uh, the, the third habit. Um, so you know uh, diversification, do your research and portfolio management. Great. Yes, that's why we lead experts like yourself. Thank you. Uh, personally, I've learned a lot from you today, Yuchen, and I'm sure our audience have also uh, learned uh, different tips from you. Um, any final thoughts before we close our webinar today, Yuchen? I think this is uh, a great opportunity to, to 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 catch up with you and also to share some of the thoughts which you know we've, you know I've also learned myself through you know my my professional uh, career. I think uh, as a final thought is uh, it's really mm. not that difficult. And so my, my role, our company's job is to promote investing as a, as a service. So we wanted to make sure this is, uh, you know, we can offer some jargon-free, trustworthy advice and uh, and services to people who has the needs, which I believe everybody, need, you know, have those needs. And uh, it's a journey rather than mm. just an experience. So uh, um, I think, you know, we all we all learn our own lessons, but it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a fun thing to do in my mind. And it's something that, you know, can generate a great result for anybody. Uh, if it's been done in the right way. Excellent. Thank you. For anyone who wants to get in touch with Yuchen, uh, you'll find his contact details at the end of this webinar. And thanks for listening. And thank you so much, Yuchen, for sharing all your tips with us today. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you.